Hi everyone, welcome, Bruce here. Bonjour tout le monde, merci d'être passé. On regarde vite fait, euh, en infrarouge, qu'est-ce que j'ai attrapé en le deux jours, et ensuite on s'en va sur la surface pour aller structure, sur la lune. We're going on the surface to see real structures, what I believe are real constructed structures on the moon. This is really quick, I think, uh, under just about two minutes. Um, some of the captures two days ago, during what would have been the black moon, and I did not see anything, the sky was actually really dim <laughs> um, more compared to other days which it should have been very bright and of course I did not see any moon um, it was very very dark last night I went out for two hours guys to um, I saw meteors and I saw UFOs and I saw lights over the house pretty incredible so these I caught uh, two days ago you can see different shapes different characteristics different sizes look in the top here this is the only frame in two hours guys look You'll see it on top, a little flash. There you go. It's very bright um, meteors when they go by, or could be UFOs, anyways. But either way, UFOs are just unidentified flying objects. Watch this one uh, pop in and out of focus or in frame. You'll see it'll disappear at one point. Whoop, popped. It looks like it's gone, but then it sort of spirals back. It must be close to the um, oxygen, right? The oxygen um, close to uh, us. So, you gotta say maybe it's closer than we think when they're popping like that, but we still don't know. It's science it itself is basically uh, theory. So we're looking at behind sinus iridum. Now these shots, are, for me, are greatly appreciated because obviously I've never seen the surface as well, and we could clearly see it's one hell of a drop as it goes down. But don't forget, there's the optical illusion of the parallax, which gives us an illusion that some of these things that are all standing up high and towering look like they are lying down. So look at that light source on the top. It's behind sinus iridum. There are smokes and hazes. Those are transient lunar phenomenons. Uh, they're very hard, uh, small and far away to see, but if you go to sinus iridum on any photo, you'll still see that little white dot there. Now, if you see in the lower part, uh, the white bright area, well, you see how it can pass off as a, an even floor obviously because the smokes and hazes are all traveling by at the same height and it's making like a blanket on the surface which gives us the impression that you know um, there's uh, a flat surface look at this light that we just saw real close up now we're further out there's in the circle this is just west of a sinus iridum and that's sinus iridum itself here just beside Copernicus Crater, a light source, energy source, it's always on, and you can see it. Clearly, someone is manufacturing something, I believe. Look at the pipe or straight line, again, that leaves every structure that I always see. There's always a pipe. I've not seen one structure yet without a pipe. What we're going to see a bit later on in this video is absolutely incredible, and again, an astounding finding that if it was in the news, it would go around the world but seeing um, the public has no credibility uh, it won't get around but you know what that's good news for us because we get to view what we want on the surface here it is a bit well quite a bit closer and still that light source there uh, now keep in mind Copernicus crater is on the top left side of this uh, photo where you see right there those two lights and it's not, I'm not hiding it uh, most people trolls say he's not telling us where it is he's not telling us the coordinates but in reality I'm showing the exact location and there's no tampering here in any photo and every photo of the moon um, these are seen they're seen scarcely they're hard to see okay but um, don't thrash me for having gotten it clearly again a light source right there connected to all the pipings and everything at times it looks overgrown, right? Maybe um, deserted. But we gotta be careful for that. We're finding all these structures and light source top center right there, of course. But all the connections again and lines, but it, could it be overgrown? Could it be vegetation overgrown? Now we have all these theories. So in reality, the more we see of the surface, the more we plunge into theories and we're not getting close to the truth, some say, but it doesn't matter, we're seeing a lot. 
right here along the sinus irritum again at the back, areas we don't get a chance to see the surface. That incredible purple, again, that we see all the time in green on the surface, atmosphere clashing, it's all an accumulation of, uh, for me, proof and evidence that uh, the moon is not a gray, devastated, empty sphere. That's for sure. Well, and I'm not talking about inside of it because that we'll never know. Crevices, canyons, and valleys and ridges and descents and mountainous areas that um, go down into the the ground. It's pretty incredible. See at the back here, I showed the structures now that was, were in the dark. And again, some were even telling me in the community, we see those craters, some of them actually pretty elevated. I really like this one because it reminds me a lot of Bianchini Crater. And on top of that, and in between all of that, look at the bottom, guys. It's blurs and hazes. Nothing blurry about the photo. It's the atmosphere, or natural or not, on the moon. Now, let's look at the back. We'll clarify this part. Keep your eyes on the top left. There. Those are the elevated structures that I showed you. In the bottom, it, yeah, a abracadabra, right? It's amazing. And all I'm trying to do is show the surface, uh, the virtual surface, exactly what the surface of the moon looks like. And, that's exactly what we're looking at. Just high ridges and mountains. There's a lot more than we think. So how come those are so high? And why am I asking that? Because supposedly, don't forget, the Apennine Mountains are just 10 or 12,000 feet under uh, Mount Everest here on Earth. Well, now, why would we see this so elevated, this region, as compared to the regions that's, that is thousands of feet higher? That is because of the Terminator line. Alongside of it, for whatever the reason, we're getting a very nice glimpse under the veil. Copernicus, top right here, and I will scroll over to the side for you to know exactly where we are. We do see square objects on the surface in many areas, and there's no filtering here. Here, um, a close-up to see the surface. Do you see how the, uh, the objects look green? There's a greenery to uh, what we're seeing. That's not a filter. That's the color of the objects on the surface. Just like the say, there's a bridge-like object in the air. Just like Bianchini Crater, it was the same thing. Look in the center, the Christmas tree-like area, triangular, right here in the circle. There, right there. Look at the layering on the surface, how elevated they are. It's the real surface. Copernicus is over to the complete right there. I'll get an arrow up a bit later for you to show you. But now we're talking about 90 degree angles that could be built structures or remnants of massive, even more giant built structures. We see them. They could be foundations. They would be humongous, ginormous, but nonetheless. Now we're going to look at something very, very serious. These findings are exceptional. The lines that are going on the surface, I don't have, just look at it. I'm not going to get any area, arrows up, okay? I want you to see the square that's on the surface there. I know you see it. And the lines going to and from over top of this area on the bottom right. There it is, the arrow, right there. We're going to see it right there. Take a look at this structure. It's massive. It's amazing. So there you have it, massive lines. I'm pointing to the lines right now that are going over this area that's about five to six miles wide, just a square. Uh, it could be 10 to 15 miles wide if you uh, count all the other attachments around it and look, light source again, something very common to see um, around these structures, on top of these structures. An amazing view of Copernicus Crater's Edge. I got the whole crater on top at the bottom, south side. Uh, you could see almost southeast, you could see on the bottom these massive structuring objects, natural or not. I don't think they're natural. There's three of them. There's two lower that I've shown before, but I'm just looking at that big one up there, right pressed up against Copernicus, maybe even four, maximum three or four miles from it. We see some areas that look covered up, but again, it could be camouflage, but the light sources and very rectangular in particular. So I'd have to go back to these areas and see if the light sources remain there or if they're just UFOs parked on the surface. You see smoke coming from one of them on top, I believe, and the proof is there. Thank you for liking this video and taking the time to subscribe and sharing it on other platforms.
For anything and everything, for whatever the reason you want to send me something, P.O. Box 341 in Valleyfield, Quebec. The postal code is J6S4V6. My name is Bruce Wartz.